down to eat a meal, how often are you thinking about physics? For me, the answer is every time. Sometimes I get caught up in the elegant, cloudy swirls of milk in my mug of tea, or the way vegetables turn bright green when I cook them just the right way. But lately, my meals have been flavored with physics because I have a new theory that every dish can be classified as a soup, salad, or sandwich. During the depths of the early pandemic, my quarantine pod quickly ran out of things to talk about. One of our favorite pastimes became asking each other silly questions, like, "How many geese do you think you could fight off at once?" <laughs> Or if there was a zombie apocalypse and it took out all infrastructure and everyone but us, could we reinvent computers from scratch? <laughs> While sitting in our living room, these conversations took us on winding adventures. They were a way for us to explore outlandish situations and use our collective knowledge to figure out how the world works. One such question was the subject of particularly many bitter debates. Can every food dish be sorted as a soup, salad, or sandwich? Our initial hypothesis was absolutely every dish can be distinctly sorted into one of these three categories. But we quickly came up with many examples of foods that simply could not be put into only one category, like soup dumplings, or tostadas, or potato salad. We craved a more palatable solution. We dug deeper and updated our question to: Can every dish be classified as a soup, salad, or sandwich? This distinction allowed for overlap between the three categories, like a Venn diagram. And our updated hypothesis was: Yes, using a Venn diagram model, we can classify every dish. This worked much better, but we still had examples that didn't fit, like oatmeal or Jello. After arguing in circles for hours, I suddenly remembered that I and most of my friends are PhD students studying physics. So why weren't we using physics to solve this problem? Physicists have a tool called a phase diagram, and we use them to classify the behavior of a system under various external conditions. We can use them to understand a wide variety of systems, like the melting of sea ice. The magnetism of a material, or even the firing of neurons in our brains. These phenomena sound completely different, but physics tells us they're the same. Could we use this tool to give us some insight into our messy food problem? Could we build a 3D phase diagram where soup, salad, and sandwich <laughs> are distinct phases, with complex phase transitions between? Can we find some connections from our silly question to some real, interesting physics? Our hypothesis is yes. As with any substantial question, we started with the low-hanging fruit. We first tucked into soups and salads. We came up with many examples of dishes that we thought were either soups or salads, and a pattern quickly emerged. Whether a dish is a soup or a salad depends largely on its effective temperature and its effective pressure. Effective temperature is the temperature of the dish relative to its melting point. So, a bowl of chili has high temperature. A bowl of ice cream has low temperature. By effective pressure, I mean the coarseness of the components or how finely the ingredients are chopped. So, a Caesar salad has low pressure because all of its components are distinct and air fills in the gaps between them. Whereas a bowl of cereal is a soup and has high pressure, because the milk is itself a component of the dish and it fills in the gaps between the larger cereal components. You may be wondering how we knew that temperature and pressure are the right way to describe soups and salads. Well, it's because we had recognized that the phase diagram we sketched is related to the phase diagram for water. In this case. Salads correspond to the gaseous phase of water, and soups to liquid water. We also know that water has a solid phase, which we call ice. Usually, solids have perfect crystalline structure, but some materials have solid-like phases, where the atoms are frozen in place but not in a perfect grid. 
These phases are called glasses. Yes, like the glass in your windows or in your drinking glass. And we found that some dishes fall into the category of glassy soups, such as ice cream. These are dishes that are solid, but only because they are served at a temperature below their melting point. So they aren't true solids, but rather solid like glasses. It's great news that the soup salad phase plane is related to the phase diagram for water, because physicists have thoroughly studied some of water's more bizarre behaviors as well. For example, this is the critical point, and it's the termination of the line separating liquid from gas. Past this point, we say that the fluid is supercritical, meaning it can transition between phases without the need for evaporation or condensation. In this region, is the fluid a liquid or a gas? Well, it's both. Here's a video of some carbon dioxide in the chamber. Carbon dioxide also has a phase diagram very similar to water's. That line separating the liquid CO2 from the gaseous CO2 is called the meniscus. And if the temperature and pressure are tuned correctly, in other words, if we navigate to the supercritical regime, then that meniscus suddenly disappears. The CO2 is literally neither a liquid nor a gas, but it is also somehow both. Ambiguous and unsatisfying, I know, but reality, <laughs> nonetheless. Because we knew that CO2 and water have this supercritical regime, we knew that we should also forage for some supercritical soup salad transitions as well. The example we came up with is comprised of tomatoes, peppers, onions, lime juice, and olive oil. If all of these ingredients are chopped into bite-sized pieces, you might call this a chunky salad. Dice the same ingredients more finely, and it's labeled a salsa. Salsas themselves have a wide variety of consistencies, from chunky to soupy. So finally, consider blending all of these ingredients and serving it cold. Now you've got gazpacho, which is indisputably a soup. This transition from salad to soup happened continuously. At no point were we able to decide when the salsa stopped being a salad and started being a soup. Salsa is a supercritical food. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now we can move on to the sandwich phase. In addition to temperature and pressure, we need something different and more creative to describe sandwichness. We struggled for a long time to distill the essence of a sandwich, and we settled on something called carb enclosure, which describes the connectedness of the dish's carb component. The carb enclosure parameter can lead to three different phases, overconnected, minimally connected, and unconnected. A calzone has dough that is completely connected and 100% enclosing all of the other ingredients. It's very robust to part of the carb being removed, such as taking a bite. A calzone is an overconnected sandwich. Pizza also has a fully connected carb, but its carb enclosure is closer to 50%. Pizza is an open-faced sandwich, which is still a sandwich, but a minimally connected one. Baked ziti, however, has many unconnected carb components. Its carb enclosure is also quite small. In fact, the sauce is covering the noodles, so the carb enclosure is more like 0%. Baked ziti is a salad. <laughs> <laughs> or a soup if you're saucy. <laughs> this method of sandwich classification leaves some ambiguities, and these are situations that are ripe for an experimental probe. The experimental question to be answered is as follows. Can you pick it up by the carb and eat it? If yes, the dish is a sandwich. This parameter works well to describe sandwichness because connectedness is another important concept in physics. It's crucial for studying networks like power grids, computer servers, and friend groups. You've already encountered each of these networks today, and maintaining robust, Overconnected networks is central to our livelihood. All right, if you combine the sandwich axis with the soup salad phase plane that we discussed before, 
then the full 3D phase space emerges. This is our current model for classifying soups, salads, and sandwiches, according to the parameters effective temperature, effective pressure, and carb enclosure. And so far, it works pretty well. But I still have some questions about this model. I am not convinced that it's entirely complete yet. I think there could likewise be sandwichness phases that have to do with the orientation of the carb component. If you compare baked ziti to lasagna, lasagna is certainly more of a sandwich. This mostly has to do with the orientation of the noodles. The ziti noodles don't have a well-defined orientation, but a key feature of lasagna is the neatly stacked noodles. This line of thinking was actually inspired by liquid crystals, most famous for their role in liquid crystal displays, or LCDs. Liquid crystals have very interesting phases that are defined by their relative orientations. By tuning the concentration of the crystals and the magnetic field applied to them, liquid crystals can take on several different orientational phases. The difference between this yellow and orange phase could determine if a dish is a sandwich. And this red twisted phase is what controls the colors of light coming from your LCD screens. This is just a taste of how our model could improve and the types of things we culinary statistical mechanicians can still learn from the broad field of physics. No meal is complete without dessert, so I'd like to leave you with one final example of some weird statistical mechanics behavior. Coexistence. If the conditions are just right, then multiple phases can coexist in harmony. May I present to you the pinnacle of ambiguous deliciousness, the ice cream sundae in a waffle cone bowl. <laughs> This dish has got ice cream, a glassy soup, hot fudge, a soup, sprinkles and candy, those are salad components, all contained in a waffle cone bowl, a carb that you could technically pick it up by and eat it. <laughs> this dish sits at the quadruple point of our face space and proves that the sweetest moments are found in this region of coexistence. No matter which way you slice it, Every dish can be classified as a soup, salad, or sandwich. Maybe you've found a counterexample, or you've disagreed with some of my classifications, and that's excellent. As with any scientific model, this one will continue to morph and improve as it is challenged and questioned. The world is full of silly questions, just waiting to be asked and surprisingly nuanced answers, just waiting to be savored. I hope I've left you hungry for both. <laughs> <laughs>